Sports Editor is really grateful to have Curtis Camfer chat to us. Uh, man, it's an interesting story, but obviously loves cricket. So thank you so much for your time, Curtis. It's really good to chat about your career and, and what you've been up to lately. But before we, we actually talk about cricket, hockey was also a sport that you were quite dominant at. Um, tell us a little more about hockey and then what sort of persuaded you to go to the cricket route? Um, yeah, it's crazy. Going through high school, um, my brother played both cricket and hockey and golf, all three of them. But um, hockey was my, my main sport. I got, got a bursary to Saints, uh, Saints of the Dins for, for mainly hockey and a bit of cricket. So it was a bit of a dual, uh, dual bursary. And um, I loved playing hockey through throughout the, the ranks. And when I got to about under was under 16, I made the under 18A Southern side and made the SN17 side. And I think fortunately that it was just a training camp because if I had played for for the national team, um, maybe I would have been playing hockey and, and not cricket. But uh, I, I stuck at it and, and got a break in, in cricket and, and played a bit of under-19 cricket. And from then on, I just made my decision like this is my, my path forward, my way forward. Mm, excellent. Well, there we go. You could have been playing hockey for Ireland. Who knows? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you've made a good move. Um, and just generally speaking... Are enjoying life in Ireland? Things seem to be really interesting at the moment. From going nice, warmish weather to cold again, but cricket season is about to kick off again. How are you finding life in Ireland? All going well? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cold right now, but it's good. I'm enjoying uh, moving with a couple of couple of mates here from that play cricket in Ireland, so it's really good so far. Um, just been been out out and about, just training. So it's it's a bit tough now because it's level five. It's literally just straight to training and straight to the supermarket. But um, it should all open up in the next while. But I'm I'm really enjoying Ireland right now, and especially the environment. No, that's great. That's great. But yeah, good to see you have been busy from an international point of view. But I just want to get a bit more of an understanding. You, you played for the Ireland Wolves. Who is who exactly are the Ireland Wolves? What, what, what's going on there? Uh, so the Irish Wolves is a, a mixture between the A side and emerging side. So it takes takes some guys from the from the senior side that gives them experience in like other conditions. And normally it's our winter, so we go to subcontinent conditions. So it's really nice for for guys to gain that experience on a Wolves trip. So it's a, it's a real blend between experience and youth. Um, fortunately, it's nice for, for me to get get on those tours and just go and learn, um, which is really nice. It's kind of a, a an open environment where, where it's all about learning and understanding and growing a game, which is really good to have. And also about nurturing the young guys coming through. So we have guys that are 18, 19 years old, 17 going on the tours and that, which is really good for, for their development of their game. And you, you get out for four or five weeks and you, you go to a different, go out of your comfort zone and you kind of just test yourself in different conditions. No, excellent. That's brilliant. And um, because recently you, you played against um, Afghanistan, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that must have been a good experience, but one or two tough nuts along the way as well. Yeah, playing R- Rashid Khan and, and Majib and stuff like that was yeah. was crazy. Um, they're unbelievable players, and they're not world number one and world number two. Yeah, and yeah. they swipe or bowlers in the world for nothing, but it was an amazing learning curve. And to come out on the better side was, was nice for, for my batting performance, but I think as a team, we really felt that we let ourselves down an island down. We, we put ourselves in, in position to win a lot of those games, and it's just crazy. Somehow we just found found a way to to get ourselves out of those match winning performances. Um, the way Stola batted in those in those scenarios um, shows how good he is and and how close we are. And it's just it was just frustrating for us as a as a team. We, we we went out there to get as many points for the for the Super League and not coming back with any points feels like we've let ourselves down. But um, we're growing, we're learning. It's it's tough to play against them. They're playing a lot of cricket as well in the next. Wow, so for us, we're trying to get as much cricket in and get as many points as, as we can for the next while. Yeah, because it, it just seemed, and I'm just to really talk about Ireland generally now in terms of cricket. I came into the scene, I think it was about in 2015, you know, uh, having such, so many good results um, do, and eventually even got test status and then hit on test status at the bed as well. But it's sort of like Ireland got too high and now it seems like everyone else has sort of stepped a level up and now it seems like you guys have to go another level up, which is a good thing, don't you think? Just more homework to be done and push yourselves, I guess. Yeah, definitely. It's it's the way the way sports going is that professionalism mm-hmm. and, and that that kind of that drive and, and and growing again and again. Like you see the way India and England are playing ODI cricket right now. It's it's a freak. Like for you to be in the environment to see how they're playing it. Um, but for us, we we started the summer really well. I know we lost two one against England, but we we showed good. We put good performances together there, and that kind of we thought was going to be our stepping stone for the summer. It was tough with with no international, no, no home fixtures um, for us and stuff like that. So we kind of got pinned back again there. And then 
off for a tour and you only have a week or two to prepare for, mm. for international games is not always the best, but that's what we've been given, you know, with COVID and stuff like that. Everyone's facing the same kind of um, problems. Um, so we don't like to make excuses for that, but we're just feeling like we're going to have to step up and we've got to be on the ball even more. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, definitely. But it's, it's good. At least some form of cricket is happening, but I know you're not quite where you want to be yet because you can sense things are going to get better for you, which is good. But just on that, um, so Ireland A team, has that fallen away or is it just uh, the Wolves a, a temporary sort of thing at the moment? Uh, the Wolves is basically the, the Irish A side. Or it's the, it's right. the, it's the okay. emerging side. more okay. like it. So it's a bit of a mixture of the A side and some, some youth in there. Okay, just wanted to just clear that up. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Chris. But debut against England, you couldn't ask for a better start, could you? Uh, no, not at all. I, I actually, I didn't even think I was going to play the first game. Um, we had an inter-squad warm-up game and I did quite nicely and I wasn't really thinking about that at all. And then we played England in a warm-up game and the skip came to me and said, listen, you're not playing the warm-up game. Um, we just want you just to, to relax, learn here, be here. And then two days later, he said, you know what, listen, the performance you put in, the training you put in, we really want you. We, we're excited for you. We think you're going to start on the on the first ODI. And yeah, it's crazy um, the way it started. It was, I think it was better that I didn't have time to think before I knew it. I was, I was in there and batting. Um, didn't have time to to sit there and and think about it that much. It was really good just to get get myself involved in the game. And and yeah, luckily it went my way and I started really nicely. But just you know, we we used to chat in TV and we watch and we you know we commentate and say, "Oh, this guy's doing so well," things like that. But how much of an experience is it to actually be up against one of the world's best teams and you know, how they do what they do, you know, so much is happening. How do you sort of all take it in and just enjoy the moment? But there's so much going on, you know, in this cricket, anything could happen at any ball. How do you sort of just absorb all of it and say, right, here we go, focus, this is what I need to do? Yeah, it's crazy. A lot of uh, the ball came to me, the skipper, and just said to me, um, you know, just really enjoy your day, um, which is quite quite hard to, to take it and I, you, you look back now and you think oh geez did I actually take in as much as I could during the day mm-hmm. and I tried to at every moment I could when I was batting or bowling just to you know just take a second stand back and be like geez I'm playing at the GS bowl against England yeah it's a bit of a pinch <laughs> you know but um, I suppose your competitive nature and, and that kind of your sporting your sporting code, code and the way you want to get better and the way you want to test yourself comes through so much because all I just thought about is each ball at a time. And I think that was really good for me. Um, but yeah, they are a class act. They're world class. And it's crazy to see how, how good they are. And it's lovely to be tested against them. And we're, as a country, we wanting to be playing against them more often than not. You know, they're a two-hour flight away. And mm-hmm. to, to lose 2-1 to the world champs, you know, a lot of, a lot of teams won't, won't even win a game off them. So it's really nice for, for us to do that. So we're hoping to get more games in, especially, you know, we've got a few big countries coming over this summer. So it's, we're looking really forward to the summer. Right. You mentioned it. Let's pick up on that. South Africa in July. <laughs> Good to see you. You've got to be aiming to get into that, that starting 11 there. Cause I'm sure you want to have a, a crack. Um, and that again, I think it's so good. That South Africa is playing Ireland. And I think Ireland are, are eager to show like we can do this. Uh, I'm sure you, you want to be part of that whole setup there, don't you? Yeah, fortunately, hopefully I can be, be a part of it. It'll be a real, real nice, nice game to play and to play against anyone in the top five countries. To play any international cricket, you're really fortunate to play. It doesn't matter if you play one game or two games or, or 200 games. All the guys say any international game you get to play is, is an amazing privilege. So it'll be nice to play anyone. We've got a few other games lined up. Hopefully, COVID permitting those go through. Um, but yeah, we, we're looking forward to the summer, I suppose. Hopefully, for me, it's just about doing what I can for the team. Um, whether it means do nothing or do something, um, I'm yeah. just happy for what the team wants, you know. Um, whether it means I have to carry drinks or, or play a part in the games, I don't mind. As long as Ireland's coming out on top, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it because uh, it's, it's something I, I actually can't even, I don't even know when South Africa lost played Ireland. I think it's ages ago. But so it's going to be nice to see. Um, but on that as well, you know, there's, there's the 2020 World Cup, there's the 50 over World Cup. Are Ireland sort of, well, I'm sure they've got plans towards that, but are you feel you guys are planning nicely towards that? Where are you guys currently standing? What's sort of happening in the camp, if I may ask? Yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of things brewing at the moment. Now we've we've got the domestic season, and then a lot of internationals, and then 
hopefully the Euroslam is going to go ahead, which is the T20 tournament towards the back end, which will be good, really good prep for us for um, for the T20 World Cup. And we we go out, we play the pre World Cup qualifiers, which is, if I'm not mistaken, if we've got four teams in our pool, and if we can get through there, well. Hopefully, I can make it onto that. I haven't played a T20 game for Ireland just yet. So, for me, it's about having a big summer, a big year slam and trying to crack into to the T20 side. Um, and then from then, hopefully, we can get ourselves out there. Uh, thankfully, we've, we've pre-qualified. So, we, we play the, I think it's the, the second half of the Super 8. And then if you, you have to become top two in your pool and then you go through into the, the, the 12 teams or the, the 10 teams it is for the T20 World Cup. So, it's really busy um, for the next while. Uh, we'll be up until roughly just before December. We we won't have any time off whatsoever. So it's going to be a long, a long season, but a good season. So with another World Cup coming in the following December, I think it is in Australia. It's it's a lot of T20 cricket, and it's, it's something that as our strong point, we've put a lot of emphasis in it in the last two years to to grow. I think two years ago we were 18th in the world, and right now we're 11th. So sure. with Sterling and Kev, those two are the top batters in T20 cricket. They they have the highest partnerships. They have the, the most runs in T20 cricket in the last two years. They they play Rashid Majib, all these guys that do so well in IPLs. They play them all the time. And I think that's mm-hmm. going to stand us in good stead going forward. We play Zimbabwe at the end of the summer in, in ODIs and T20s. We play South Africa, ODIs and T20s. So it's, we, this is Irish cricket is the strongest at T20 cricket. So it's going to look, look really forward to, to the T20 World Cup. And hopefully we can stake a good claim in that, in that tom- competition. Well, definitely, Curtis. And I just can hear the, the enthusiasm and the, the drive there, it's, it's there. So it's, it's, it's good to see. Um, and talking about it, uh, you know, you said you haven't played at G20 International, but you have played a number of ODRs and your batting average is 50. So I'm pretty sure that's puts you in good stead for the T20 setup there. But that's good momentum for you, don't you feel? Going, no, going into ODRs with that average of, I've got 50 runs as an average per game. You must be feeling good in that regard. Yeah, it's it's really nice to have some runs under your belt and try to kind of kick on from momentum, you know. And I'm a firm believer of when it rains, it pours. So you got to make sure you cash in because when it dries up, it really does dry up, um, and it's really tough to get out of form when you when you're not in form. It's really tough to get uh, into form. So I'm hoping just to keep this going and and just try trying to stay as, as patient and level headed as I can, you know. Um, ODIs and stuff like that. There's I put a lot of responsibility on on the way I play and the role I play, and I've chatted to to the head coach and the captain and. They want me to play in a certain way, which will benefit the team, and, and I'm happy to do so, and it suits me. So right now it's going really well, and hopefully long may it continue. I think that's, for me, my biggest thing is to hold myself to my own standards and do the best of the team. And whether it mean I have to score 30 of, of 10 balls or try to score 200 or whether I have to score 20, 20 strike rate, you know, for me it's about doing what's best for the team. And, and right now it's been, been really good so far. But, um, yeah, hopefully I can have a good summer and try to crack myself into the, the T20 side. You know, it's quite a... I'd say quite a, a well-established uh, team and it's got its, yeah. every player's got their own roles and stuff like that. So it's going to be tough mm-hmm. to get into that. But I think with a lot of hard work, it's really good to see that we're all pushing each other to, to, to higher heights. And like you say, we're trying to get that extra step up and um, that's where it's going to be. It's going to come from within the camp and there's a lot of drive from the youngsters to push, to push all players and us young players are all pushing us each other to a higher level. There's five of us that are under 23 years old. So it's really good. Uh, to be in the squad with, with a young bunch of guys that are driving for, for excellence. Mm, good prospects there, my man. Sounds very, very good. Um, seems like a, quite a detailed plan happening. So that's, it's excellent. But also a bowling economy of 5.76 again with ODRs. Bowling all rounder, batting all rounder. How do you classify yourself? Because that, that's interesting, that. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I just like to call myself an all rounder. Right? Very well. Kind of, kind of to do. It's lovely to be, be in that position. Or I'm really fortunate to, to have an impact in, in, but with both bat and ball. And some days it's going to be with the bat, and some days it's going to be with the ball. Um, it's basically what I said is it's whatever, whatever the team needs me to be. And right now it's kind of in the in the middle of to, to hold up an end and make sure I'm really, really accurate and, and drive the runs. Um, and luckily I've taken a couple of wickets, which is which has been really nice. Which what the skipper's always happy about. So I'm just going to try to keep that role and, and, and try to keep that and cement that spot for me. I know Bal is really happy with what I'm doing and mm. I'm going to try to just continue that really, to be honest. It's whatever he wants, I'm going to try to do my best. And I, I say this very respectfully to all the other Ireland cricketers and whoever else might have represented Ireland beforehand, but it almost seems like you've done a real good deed in terms of the image for all-rounders for cricket in Ireland. Um, I think it's 
there's so many good all-rounders around the world. We don't even need to <laughs> speculate on that. But I think you've really um, taken that all-round role and made it yours, if you know what I'm trying to say, because I think it's just added a bit more balance to the Irish side. Um, am I right in saying that? Is there any truth towards what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I think just fortunately for me, it, it came off for me. You know, there's a lot of good all-rounders in, in there and stuff like that, which have I had the experience and maybe they just haven't kicked on. But I think, yeah, luckily for me, it, it's just kind of gone my way and hopefully I can make my own. I, I still don't think it's mine. I still have to do a lot to, to earn that spot. Um, with the Irish side, there's a lot of competition and stuff like that. So hopefully I can put a good summer together and, and cement that completely to be mine. But um, for now, yeah, I'm happy with my start and it's just a start, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Just a start. <laughs> Good times ahead. But you also became the first man in history to make back-to-back 50s and take wickets um, in your first two ODRs. Uh, again, excellent. And you seem to do well in these big moments. Uh, so obviously you like a, a bit of pressure and you like a, a bit of BMT. Is that, is that something that also sort of fills part of your character? Um, yeah, I'd say I wouldn't say I'm the most technically sound player and, and not, not the most, but uh, throughout my career, I've been called a wholehearted cricketer and that's what I love to do. I love to play with the heart on my sleeve and give everything. Um, so for me, most of the time when you're an all-rounder, chances are you're going to be thrown in batting if you're batting five, six, seven. You know, when you come in and you're 300 for, for four or five, you know, you're not really going to have a big impact. But the thing is, you have those opportunities with the ball and bat to impact the game largely because if you come in at batting five or six and you fall down for, for not many, you have a big impact. And what you do there says a lot about the way you play the game. So it's really fortunate that way. Same in the middle overs. You're not meant to take wickets in the middle overs. You're not meant to bust the game open. And if you do that, it just shows good emphasis on on how you can do. So you're kind of creating your own own way to create success and stuff like that. But I've been fortunate so far that I've enjoyed that type of, of pressure and hopefully I can keep doing well. I think I train for that way and it's just come off lately. Mm. And I, if I'm not mistaken, you almost want to model your game because you were born in South Africa. Jacques Hannes. I mean, that guy was as cool as us and he just did what is required of him. Do you have a similar approach in, in terms of games like that where you just I know what I need to do, just there we go. And it doesn't matter what anyone says or what is going on, I'm going to make sure I execute my plan. Yeah, I suppose most people like that. But um, <laughs> you, can take a, you can take a legend like that, whether, whether you're a bowler or a batter, you'll take any of his stats. If you're, a, if you're an opening bowler and you see his stats and you say, right, if you play a 10-year career and you have his stats, will you be happy? Everyone will say 100%. And if you're a batter in the top five and you say, will you take his stats after 10 years? Everyone will say 100%. You know, he's just a freak. Um, mm. And that's crazy to, to say about it. But yeah, um, I love the way he played the game. And, and Ben Stokes just kind of showing a, a new era of an all-rounder where it's more yeah. of an impact. And yeah. I'm hoping to, to be kind of in between them. Um, I'm hoping to try for fuller role. And for me right now, it's not really about me. It's about what the team needs and if what I can do for the team. And if, if that means that I have to do something good or bad or, or on the day, like um, in the UAE, I sadly got injured and I couldn't bowl. Um, and fortunately enough, I got picked as, as a batter, um, which was really, really nice to be picked as um, because I, I just couldn't bowl and I was, I was batting really nicely. So for that day, it was all about just trying to do as much as I can in the field and, and, and bat a bit for the team. Um, so uh, thankfully, I'm over the injury now and I'm hopefully can be back on both fronts for, for Ireland and trying to do what I can for the team. Mm, definitely. Well, it's good. Just keep, just keep going, my man. Don't give up. Just keep going. But just tell a bit about club crickets in Ireland. And you represent Leinster. Um, when is the season meant to start? And how does it actually work? Because I think you guys are, am I right in saying, only three professional sides there. So how does the season sort of operate? How does it work there? Yeah, so we actually just gone, we've just undergone a, a full, basically, restructuring of the, the domestic seasons, um, or the whole system and stuff like that, and the structure. So we, we into four uh, four full provinces. Uh, Munster were, were part-time uh, just playing the T20s, but now they've gone f- fully into this into the system and a couple of the contracted players have have moved to Munster uh, just to strengthen their side so myself Gareth Delaney uh, uh, Tyron Kane was contracted with them he's moved over uh, he was with Cricket Island he's moved over now to Munster too so we we all based in Leinster still and I'm still playing my club cricket with YMCA in Leinster but we we are contracted and we play for for Munster so that competition starts at the end of this month so it's going to be a big big uh, big change and big 
strengthening of our system, I think. Um, again, trying to get the, the best 44 players playing at all times. And I feel like the system really does get that. And the competitive cricket will be up now because we've distributed the uh, the Cricket Island players around the fully contracted players, um, which before Leinster had 11 contracted players and they're playing 11. So it was really strong. And the Knights had five or six. So it was basically between two squads. Um, and then now with that, it's, it's been brought out and distributed a bit better now. So mm. I feel like um, all teams have a good chance. And if you start, or, you know, in, in white ball cricket, if you get a bit of momentum, you win your first game. I think we could see some, some big games this summer. Absolutely. And it just from what you're saying, it sounds like the cricket body in Ireland is, is really supporting you guys and looking for more innov- innovative ways to make the game exciting, to develop your game and the bigger picture. Is it also quite a, quite a well-supported uh, effort there from the cricket body? Definitely, definitely. I think it's they're kind of going on the the structure of um, a few years back. New Zealand rugby kind of did it with with telling each each province how they want to play and the way they want to play, and it's kind of been rubbing off now. As we've got the the cricket island as a whole and the national team as our, our focus, and then we're going to find ways that we can better the system to feed the national team, um, and that and that's being really good. Um, so we're really excited for that and. Um, yeah, club cricket right now with COVID and stuff like that, they've changed all to white ball cricket, all coloured clothing. So it's it's a big change and they've re- put a real emphasis on focusing on, on ODI and, and T20 cricket. So it's a, been a good decision from the board, I think, and it's going to force a lot more cricket and um, a lot more exciting view- viewership for the for the spectators. Yeah, that's definitely. And that's, that's I've said it a number of times, Curtis, in these shows. It's I really appreciate it when guys are taking cricket and just making it that much more better and making it more relevant to the times but as long as test cricket is looked after that's number one our belief but it's nice that they are finding ways to develop the game and make it more exciting because it's uh, from what i can understand and see you guys are just getting more and more momentum and just getting better and better and better so big big thing for you hard work it pays off doesn't it yeah i think so i think um uh, a lot of people just see me moving over straight away and, and and doing well but i think this is this hasn't been a plan that was was done in in two months planning. Um, I've been training to forty um, for since 2017, 2016. So it's been a been a long time coming. You know, um, it was just about finding the right time, making sure I was developed enough, making sure I felt my game was ready, and as long as making sure that I was mature enough to to withstand the move over. Um, to any young players that are are thinking of going over, I just say make sure that you you are ready because it is a tough. A tough adjustment you you do leave everything and and it's it's hard on the other side but if it is worth it and you're ready or um able to fight through it and, and make sure that you can sustain this and and make sure that you find your roots um it'd be good for you um so yeah just making sure that you you understand that there's there's good and bad and it's not just a, a quick little thought you got to make sure that you you put in the hard yards and the hard work and for me too i'm nowhere near where I want to be. I know I've got another five years of, of hard graft to, to become the player that I want to be. Interesting perspective you give there because I think, yeah, you've hit the nail on the head there, Curtis, because there's only so many certain positions and there's only certain levels you can go, but there's so many players. So it's, yeah, it's an interesting perspective you've given there. Thanks. That's, <laughs> that's good, Curtis. But test cricket, let's, let's chat about test cricket. Um, Ireland's ambitions, they've obviously been recognised as a test cricketing nation, but where do you feel the strength currently lies at the moment? More on 2020 cricket, or are they going to slowly add more emphasis on test cricket? What's happening in that regard? Yeah, so sadly, uh, we, we fell out of the, the test championship, so so a lot of those games with COVID and stuff like that, those were forced through to get the, the test uh, championship underway and to get the final played. Obviously, it's the first time that tournament kind of happened, so where we we had scheduled a test this two tests this last summer and a test this summer, but sadly because of COVID and stuff like that, those had to be called off. And there was meant to be one in December uh, against Sri Lanka, but because of the T Twenty World Cups being moved and stuff like that, they they can't facilitate those, and and the preparation just doesn't see that it will work well. So uh, Rashid Khan for Afghanistan said that the teams that put, fall outside the top eight, nine nations haven't been playing that much test cricket and there's a cry for, for them to get more games. Um, but Australia have come come forward and, and they said that they're going to try host us in 2021. I think that's just after their World Cup, after the T20 World Cup, or 2022, just after that T20 World Cup or just before it. So that'll be a, a good experience too. So there are 
games lined up for test cricket for us in the next distant future, but hopefully COVID permitting, travel allowances, travel restrictions, all that uh, permitting, we, we'll get some test cricket through. Um, it's, it's a big thing for the squad, you know, um, especially for me. I, I, my dream will be to play test cricket and hopefully I can fulfill that in the next five years. Um, but hopefully for the next two years right now with with COVID and, and all the T20 tournaments coming up and, and the World Cups like that, we're not really sure if there will be much T20 cricket for, for all nations, um, sadly, which is not a great thing. But I think with, like you said, changing times right now and with COVID, it's tough to get all, all the games in with ODIs, T20s and test cricket. So test cricket might might have to take a bit of a break for, for six months or, or a year, um, mm-hmm. which is sad to say, but um, yeah, it's just what the reality is right now. Yeah, unfortunate, but yeah, we just have to adjust, like you said, and we just keep pushing forward. But obviously you want to wear the whites and it'll be great to see you actually dominating in all three formats. Was that something that you ever thought you'd, you'd be able to manage one day? Oh, I, I haven't dominated in any format just yet. So if I could dominate in all three, that would be unbelievable. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, that would be crazy. But I, I think right now it's just about trying to do what's best for mm. well, And then my goal will be to play in all three formats and hopefully to make a spot in all three formats. Um, I think that's still a long way away and there's a lot of hard work. But I think um, Forty and I and, and all the coaching staff and all the players are, are all trying to do that. Um, you know, And to be one of those bankers for Ireland will be my, my goal for the next a uh, couple of years and hopefully I can fulfill that. Yeah. You've mentioned uh, Mr. Ford there a number of times and he's quite a dynamic coach, I'd say. Um, he must give you quite a few pearls of wisdom along the way, but also doesn't mix his words too much, doesn't he? Um, yeah. Um, Ford, he's been, been everywhere, done everything. He's done all he can as a coach and it's really amazing to have a coach of his caliber um, with us right now. And like you say, he, he chooses when to speak and when he speaks, everyone listens. Um, he, he really does allow players to grow themselves, uh, find out themselves. But if you are struggling, he is there to, to lean on, uh, which is really good to, to hear. And he, he just, I don't know, he finds, finds ways to say the right things at the right times all the time. Um, he just knows when to speak and when not to speak, uh, which is really good from him. Um, like he just speaks volume of his quality of, of a coach he is. Um, and he's, he's a type of, of, of coach that doesn't, doesn't linger on of all the great players he, he's coached and stuff like that. He just kind of looks at you and how to get better. And he uses those coachings, them, and uses those skills that he's had in, in all, all conditions and all climates uh, to speak about the game and, and to grow your game. So it's really, I've been very fortunate to have a very good relationship with him. And um, he's been a really good coach and influential coach in the last, what, a year and a you know, bit that I've been in Ireland. Mm, no, definitely. Yeah, and that's what I believe is just a, it's a matter of time before Ireland really kicks in into another gear because I think he's also chomping at the bit. He wants to get going because, you know, he, there's such valuable time now. You know, strike with the iron is hot and Ireland's in such good good uh, position. So I'm sure he wants to get going. But, yeah, we'll just have to be patient. But Curtis, you know, you're know, you not just a cricketer. You've also done some studying as well, haven't you? Um, yeah, so <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I've... Um... I finished my my degree at the end of end of last year at at the University of Pretoria. So I finished my business management, my BCom business management degree, uh, which is a great relief. Um, I was a bit nervous with one or two marks coming through, but uh, thankfully I scraped through those. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been really a good relief to to finish my studies. And for for me, it's a big thing for all cricketers to make sure that you have something to fall back mm-hmm. on. You don't know how long your career is going to be. You don't know if it's going to get interrupted with injuries and stuff like that. But it's a lot of the guys here are, are doing good degrees and stuff like that. So it's really good to to have them to fall back on and, and chat to them about further my studies. And I'll, I won't be surprised if I'll be hitting the books in the next two years or so just to get something else on top because it, it is really nice when we are busy. Uh, we're busy, but when we also have free time, it's also nice to have something away from cricket just to, to fall back on. Because uh, I was asking, aren't you going to try to pick up a, a coaching level there or something like that to keep the, the cricket going in your, your blood? Yeah, definitely. I, I do enjoy coaching and there's a few coaching courses lined up uh, in the summer, which I'm going to be doing. Um, I really do enjoy coaching. It's really, really rewarding. Um, mm. I did a couple of, of coaching clinics back uh, at the club and, and it's nice to coach the lead guys. Um, that are like 18 or so, but you know, it's not, you can't really do much with them because they're, they're technically signed and they're really talented players. So I've really enjoyed um, coaching the, the younger ages, like 14, 13, just because you can, you can do so much and you can help them. You can see the difference um, quite quickly and quite instantly, which is, 
it's a bit weird, like at, maybe because I'm a young coach or like young and in age, but I like to see instant instant rewards or instant um, results, which is really nice to see from from young players. No, oh, good, good, good. And just touching on that, because uh, we, I mean, we don't really follow school uh, cricket in Ireland, but is there a growing uh, desire there for cricket in Ireland at school level? Uh, cricket in Ireland uh, at school level is quite small. I know they have their senior cup and stuff like that, but it's the, the main thing is club cricket here. So any good schoolboy will be playing club cricket because it's played on a Saturday. And I think school games with the light going on until eight o'clock at night, they play their, their school T20s and 50 over stuff during the weeks. So they're all free on the weekends, which is really nice to have young talents playing club cricket and facing Irish bowlers or facing interprovincial players, which is really good for, for their development. And I think that's the biggest thing is finding ways to develop and nurture the, the young talent. Mm, definitely. Well, talking about talent, Curtis, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. I think it's exciting times for you. And yeah, I, I think you've got the, the work rate to really succeed and just keep chipping away at it because eventually it was going to come right. And looking forward to uh, when you take on South Africa. Hopefully we see you, Mr. Kemp, Kemp on the, the team is there and we get to see you go up against South Africa. It would be great. Cheers. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for taking the time. Pleasure. Enjoy Bye. the cold weather, man. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Cheers, bud. <laughs>